Steven Slater, the flight attendant who has captured now worldwide attention with his sudden exit from a JetBlue flight this week, held a news conference Thursday to say he appreciates all the hoopla. Thank you all so much. It's been amazing, the support and the love and the, the everything that's been brought to me and given to me by my community and my friends and the <laughs> industry at large. It's been absolutely wonderful. Slater's version though, of what happened on that plane has not been confirmed yet by other passengers. In fact, some of them say the flight attendant's attitude might have been part of the problem. Howard Denneroff is an executive producer for CBS Westwood One Radio, who was on the flight that morning. He joins us in the studio this morning. So you're there. You fly all the time, Correct. four or five times a week. Right. So you tend to notice things. You also know what it's like for flight attendants these days and the people they have to deal with. But something about Steven Slater stood out to you immediately. Why? Well, when you board a plane, normally all the flight attendants are very chipper, very perky. Good morning. How are you? Welcome aboard. And uh, I was actually seated towards the back of the plane, so when I walked all the way, he was in the back. Not a word, not a hello, just kind of staring straight down the aisle into space with his arms like this on the seats, which was completely different than the other flight attendants on board when we first walked on. So you notice that, you think, oh, it's a little different. But that wasn't the last thing you noticed. No, he, he, I, you know, I generally try to sleep when I'm on a plane, so I closed my eyes and sat down, and within a few minutes I heard him, um, I wouldn't say yelling, but sternly speaking to a, a uh, passenger about stowing the overhead, the bag in the overhead, which was too large. And, um, you know, as from all accounts, it was the female on board that, uh, that he got into the altercation with. I didn't see her, but I could hear them going back and forth about the bag was too big, the bag was not too big. But that's not unusual, mostly, if you fly that much. It happens all the time. It's not unusual, but did his tone sound unusual at all? Probably at all? initially. It was a little gruff, I would say. You know, maybe the first approach would normally be a little more pleasant, and then if the passenger mm -hmm. was a little Really, maybe you would then react that way, but it was it was right that way from the beginning. And then there was a there was a third instance to top it off. You luckily did fall asleep for most of the flight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then when it was time when it was time to prepare for landing, he came back, and that's when you really sort of had a, a bit of an encounter. Well, they make the announcement, of course, as you're descending to you know turn off all electronic devices, put your tray up, and move your seat to an upright position. I was sleeping the whole flight, so I had never moved my seat, but. Apparently he didn't think so, and so he smacked the back of my seat and said, Sir, you heard the announcement, you need to move your seat up. I said, My seat is up. He says, No, it's reclined. I said, No, it's not. And so he reached over, hit the button himself, and smacked the back of the seat again to try and show me that it was reclined, which it was not, so he right. just kind of walked off in a huff. Kind of walked off in a huff. So yeah. fast forward now, there's this big announcement which we've heard about, and people have said they heard the announcement, you heard the announcement. What did you make of it at the time? You're talking about the cursing that he did? Yes. Yeah, because before the one that, that we can't repeat on TV. Right, right. But before that, when we landed, the passenger stood up while we were taxiing on the jetway, so there was another announcement from Slater telling the passenger to sit down pretty sternly, again, rightfully so, mm -hmm. they were wa walking and uh, lifting up the overhead compartment. But uh, we were deep landing as normal, nothing was going on, and it was about six rows in front of where I had been seated, and all of a sudden he got on the intercom and started shouting at the passenger, and, uh, and all the quotes are pretty accurate that, <laughs> that you've read. Uh, and we all just looked around at each other like, what, what was that about? What prompted that? Because, right. you know, the, the individual incidents didn't seem like anything. They were all isolated, we thought. Right. But obviously they're tied together when you look back at it. So there's been all this talk now that, you know, could this in fact maybe not have happened the way he said it did? There are bits and pieces which you heard, which other people witnesses and witnessed and heard that are that do ring true. But do you think after everything you saw, what we've heard, when you add it all up, did things you think play out on that flight the way he says they did? Partially, they probably did. But I mean, just even if he was having a bad day, and even if the passenger was completely rude, and which unfortunately happens on too many airplanes. That doesn't mean you, you get on the loudspeaker and you start cursing. It certainly doesn't mean you jump out of the airplane. Um, so, no, I mean, it, 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 they're probably tied together, but the actions are a little strong for what occurred, even if it is true. Yeah. Boy, it's been a great talker all week, though, hasn't it? I'm sure you have a lot <laughs> a of people asking you it. about it. A little surprised we're still talking about it four days later. We're not done yet. Howard, <laughs> thanks. We, we actually really appreciate you coming in with your version this morning.